Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly, a podcast for and by successful business people who also deal with the pain and frustration of chronic illness. Here's Nancy Becker. We are talking today with Ella Glasgow. She is a business and life coach for creatives. As a wife, mom, and career creative, she understands the ups and downs of making your dream your reality. It's her mission to help creative entrepreneurs get out of overwhelm so that they can have a clear vision, the steps they need, and the confidence to make their dream their reality while making a significant income. I'm going to jump off of agenda and topic right now because there's a word in this bio that I think is really important right now, and I want you to talk about it, and that is overwhelm. Welcome, Ella. It's really nice to have you with us. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here with you all today. Let's, Let's jump right into this topic of overwhelm. You would think that with everything that's going on right now and with us all pretty much I'm assuming the whole country at this point is on shutdown and quarantine, you would think there would be no overwhelm. But with everything we're worried about, you know, how are we going to pay the bills? Is somebody in our family going to get sick? Is my business falling apart? What are we going to do? That really does create a lot of overwhelm. So talk to us about it. It really does. Yeah, so this is a crazy time right now that I don't think that anyone ever anticipated us seeing in this day and age. In 2020, you would have thought that we would be beyond something like this, a worldwide pandemic. Um, Things that you remember hearing stories about from the 1800s, but surely would not have this happening now. But here we are. Here we are in this situation. And because it's something that is brand new to those, all of those of us living in this new generation, we, it's very easy for us to be overwhelmed by all of this because we're not used to being at home all the time, unless that's something that you have been doing on a consistent basis. A majority of the world is out and about and they're not used to now, especially now, having to interact with people that are in your house (laughs) all day. (laughs) That could be overwhelming in itself. (laughs) Now we have to have real conversation, something that we seem to have moved away from. So there's an opportunity here that not many people are looking at. There's an opportunity to reconnect in a way that we have not done in a really, really long time because of all of the technology. We haven't connected in a, in, in a real human way in a long time because of the technology. But Because of the technology, we have an opportunity to connect in a real way that we haven't done in a long time. (laughs) We're here. We're communicating. We're connecting, you know, and and we're more than six feet away from each other. (laughs) We are much more than six feet away from each other. (laughs) We are practicing social distancing in the best way. (laughs) Yes, we yes we are. But you know, with with all of this, and it, it was funny because I was I was just watching a little bit of waiting for you to jump on the call I was I had Ryan and Kelly on on TV and they were they were talking with one of their guests and the guest was saying that he and his wife were just at each other's throats over the last couple of days just bicker 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 and it's because they didn't usually even see each other much less you know being 24 7 communication with them and And I'm thinking that's so easy to get into, but we need to be aware of that that going on and deal with it. There was a um, focusing on business. There's one of my business um, colleagues 
the other day that had put up this huge long rant and she called it a rant and she was and she was saying let's please be kind that was the first words on the on the post and then she goes on to complain and moan and groan about this woman who was having a meltdown in the grocery store and it was, you know, this whole thing was, oh, how could she do this? And da 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 you know, and on and on and on. And I'm going, hey, you know, we all are dealing with this in our own way. How do you tell people they need to deal with, you know, their their overwhelm, their stress, their they're seeing other people in the business world not dealing with things. How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I really encourage people to do is to go back to peace. P-E-A-C-E, peace. Because there is no decision that, no good decision that can be made from fear. It is very hard for anyone to make conscious, good non-regrettable decisions while they are working from fear. There's nothing wrong with being afraid. It's not that I'm telling you to lose the fear completely. Acknowledge it. You know, there are things that I'm afraid of as well. But that being said, I cannot operate from that place. I have to allow myself to go back to peace, get myself into a calm state of mind, so that I can remove myself from the situation and look at it from above and see where the solutions are for myself and for my family. And I encourage other people to do the same. If you allow yourself to remove yourself from the craziness that's going on in the world so that you can get above the situation, it will be much easier for you to see where the opportunities are for you to create better relationships with those around you, better relationships for you with your business, see where your business can fill a need right now. Because it's easy for us to think that because the world has gone crazy, that maybe we should shut it down, shut down our businesses ourselves. While many businesses are looking for other ways to fill the need. Doesn't mean that you have to change your business altogether, but it may mean that you need to find another way to provide your service to people um, where their pain is right now. Absolutely. But you cannot, yeah, but you can't see that from, from fear. You have no. to be in peace to be able to see those solutions. Yeah. And I think that takes us into the first question that we actually, um, and said we were going to talk about, and and that is to be able to give yourself the grace to deal with where you are at the moment. Yeah, grace. Grace is my word for the year. <laughs> Love it. It's it's really easy for us to beat ourselves up about things that we're not doing. We as business owners have high expectations for ourselves. And when things don't get done in the time frame that we have set for ourselves, things don't get done in the way that we expect things to be done, it's really easy to beat ourselves and anybody else up that may have been associated with delay. <laughs> but I encourage people right now, and this is not just for now, this is always, Give yourself grace and recognize where you are with yourself, where you are with your business, what's really going on right now, what resources are available to you. Maybe you don't have all of the resources. The people that I work with, they're, they're newbies to business and they don't have all of the resources available to them at the start. And so I always encourage them to give themselves grace. Don't try and get everything done right now. You're not going to be able to get everything done today. It's going to take time for you to navigate where we are in this season as not just a, a country, but a world. <laughs> it's going to take time to adapt. And if you don't have all of the resources available to you to adapt 
It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just simply means that there's something new for you to learn. And that's okay. Give yourself the time to learn it. I know that as business owners, we're all about speed. I was talking to you, Nancy, about the, the um, addition, additional resource that I'm adding to my business right now. And I was speaking with my students about this yesterday. Because of what it is that I do, it's easy for me to get fast to market with what it is that I'm offering right now. But when you're new and you've never done the things that I'm doing before, it may take longer. Doesn't mean that you're going to miss the boat. It doesn't mean that you are going to miss out on any opportunity. It simply means that you get to market when you get to market. You work at the speed that you can work. And, and be I think okay that's okay with that. Yeah, I think that's really important right now, too, because so many of my clients are going, oh, you know, I was, I was just so growing and I was, you know, had 15 employees and was making, you know, seven figure income this year. And I was on track for this and that and the other thing. And bam, it's all stopped. I'm yeah. dead in the water, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm telling her, she's a dog walker. She has a fantastic business, but right now people aren't needing their dogs walked. They can do it themselves or, or whatever. And so her business just, and I'm going, let's see if we can figure out, just be patient, take a breath. You know, let's see if we can figure out what else you can do. Dogs still need to be trained. Can you do training online and sell it? Right. You know, what are some of the things that you can still do? Take where you're at right at this very moment and see what you can do with that. Exactly. Exactly. What I like to tell people right now, when you have a vision for your business, your mission for your business, your vision and where you're going is not changing. None of that's changing. What is changing is the how. It's why I work with my clients that are in the beginning. I'm very, very adamant about them getting clear on what it is that they want to do. And that clarity brings that vision into focus so that they can have that roadmap and X marks the spot. We're still going to the same X. Your business is still going to the same spot. But what's changing right now is how we get to the spot. Correct. So if you will, like we were talking about before, if you will stay in a peaceful state of mind, it will be much easier for the how to come to you. Yeah, it's if like you're in a, put, if you're in a panic, nothing you're not going to be able to see anything. Right. Exactly. It's like when you put something into the GPS and you're going down the road, you're on the highway and you have your destination loaded into the GPS and then your GPS says, "Hey, there's a faster way. Would you like to take it? You've got 3 seconds before we're going to keep you on your same path." And you can hit that button and go the faster way and in a completely different route. Mm -hmm. That's your choice right now. But you could also keep going the same way. You may take longer to get there going the same way, but right now we're in the same situation. Mm -hmm. You have a choice right now to push a button for a different route. And I think most of the time I go, no, cause I don't know how to go that way and I'll just stay the way I am. But it it actually makes a lot of sense to say, all right, well, let's see what we can do if we do go this different way. And in times like this, you're given an opportunity. You know, it's it's not necessarily all that bad that we're having to stay at home and and you know all this because now is is the time that we have an opportunity to think about where we're going, think about what it is we want to do, think about how we want to do it, do some research, listen to podcasts, you know, and and actually take the time to say, yes, let's go that different route. Let's see where that takes us. And it might be the best thing in the world that we did. Right. And just like any decision that you make, none of it has to be set in stone. If you decide that the how to get there is not what you like, you can always change course again. Nobody's, 
nobody's stopping you. And nobody will fault you for seeing, trying something new with what it is that you were doing. And maybe it didn't work the way that you expected. Okay, so we put the coordinates in the map again and we look for a different how. I love it. I love it. I think that's great. If you are a seasoned entrepreneur who is ready to take your business to the next level, Nancy is looking for you. Learn how to get the momentum going, streamline your systems, and get more clients straight from the source. Nancy's run several successful businesses from her living room, and she's looking for new clients just like you. Go to businesssuccessunlimited.com and use the contact form at the bottom of the page to see if you're a good fit. Nancy would love to help you. Um, let's move on to the next question, which was be relational in a glossed over relationship world that I love that. And now again is a marvelous time for talking about creating relationships. Yeah. So we have a tendency, especially in the business world and people that are new to it, people that are old to it, we've all gotten used to just kind of throwing up our business cards at people. <laughs> I can remember, I remember going to a networking event a couple of years ago and there was this lady that was, she's probably a really sweet person, but because literally the first thing that she did when I walked into the room was, here's my business card. Would you like to buy da, 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 da. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Can we, can, can you let me get in? Can I take off my coat? Can I, can, hold on just a second. I, I look at networking kind of like a dating relationship and I throwing your business card is to go trying to get all the way to home base before we've even gotten in the game. Can we, can we, can, can I order a drink? Can we sit down? Can we, something? Just, can I know what's your, what's your name? <laughs> that would help. <laughs> I think I know that woman. I actually think I've met her. <laughs> what I mean? And the thing is, because of social media, we have gotten, you know, with, with Twitter and the, the, um, the platforms that, that um, limit you to a hundred characters, <laughs> mm -hmm. we've all gotten really short, which is, which is great in the sense of getting to the point, but it loses that relationship piece that is really important in building any business. It is important to build meaningful relationships because at the end of the day, what if when we get into conversation that we decide that we don't like each other, but yep. if all we've done at the start is throw out a business card and we're like, yeah, let's do something together but I don't know if I like you. I don't know if I want you to be a part of my business. I don't know if I want you in my role with I don't know if I'm actually going to call you after today because I don't know who you are. <laughs> yep. Yep. I hear you. That's well, so we and have you know, to take the time. Yeah. And, and I think with this world being, and now even more so being the social world, the social media world that it is, that is how we connect. You know, we, we connect via social media. And it's it's really interesting because I've got almost 4,000 people on my friends list on, on Facebook. And I've got right on my profile, on my personal page, don't even bother if all you're trying to do is sell to me. <laughs> you know? I, I've seen it. I am not, <laughs> you know, I'm not interested in starting a relationship, I have a limited amount of time in my day, and I don't want to take up my bandwidth with someone who all they're trying to do is sell to me. Wow. And so when I do accept somebody's friendship, then I look at their pages and I go, oh, okay, well, this looks like somebody I might want to know. And I start talking to them. Right. First things out of their mouth is, hey, I've got this great product I want you to take a look at. Can you buy from me, please? I, you know, I hit that delete button so fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's not really 
fair to them necessarily because it's not giving them a chance, but it's a learning experience for them because if they really wanted to get into a relationship with me, they would already know that the way to do it is not by trying to sell me something. Right. And you know, it's interesting. I'm thinking about um, a couple of different things. First of all, you know, the no like and trust factor, which is something that's really huge when, when we're business owners and we understand that in order for people to buy from us, they have to know, like, and trust us. But the thing is, when it comes to networking getting and getting to know somebody, we have to, you have to know, like, and trust the person before you're even willing and ready to recommend their services to someone else. And I had, I had an instance the other day, um, a, a young woman reached out to me and I don't know her from Adam. I saw that we had a mutual friend being an old uh, client of mine. And the first thing out of her mouth, first of all, in her message, this was on Facebook. First of all, her message was completely in Spanish. Oh, if she no. had taken a hot second to go to my page, she would see that I'm not a Spanish speaker. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, the whole thing, because I went and translated it, the whole thing message that she sent to me was about her new MLM that she was a part of, which is probably really great. The, pro the product that she's selling is probably really great, but she just missed the first two steps. She didn't even find out who I was before she just posted something to me. So I asked her friend, I said, Do, would you mind facilitating a conversation between the two of us? Because I'd love to just give her some tools and tips. I know that she's new in the business world, just to help her to be able to grow her business easier and better without turning people off from the jump. And yeah. so we had that meeting set. It didn't happen. And the next message that I got from her was, well, I'm really happy with my business and I love what it is that I do. And if you don't want to be a part of it, that's fine. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so Get I had that I all reached, the time. <laughs> yeah, I haven't reached back out to her, but I was like, I'm trying to help you. I want you to grow. But if yeah. people don't take the time to do those simple things, look on somebody's Facebook wall and see where you can really help them and have a real conversation with them first. Yeah. But you know, I think people aren't, especially in the MLM fields, they're not trained to do the no like and trust they're just trained to get that out there and get as many people as they possibly can to buy which is really a disservice i think to both yeah. the business and to the person trying to you know to make money from it right right exactly it really it really is a, a structure that turns people off people have a bad taste in their mouth for mlms already and when you're not training um, your people to succeed in this. I, I, I hate to say in this new world because these, these relationships and people have been working with this way. It's not just MLMs. People have been working this way for years, long before social media became the platform because we can all think of, you know, the stories of the annoying salesman, right? So this is nothing new working in this way and people are working off of a very old model and it's, time it's it's high time not just because of what we're going through right now but just the, wor the world in general it's high time that we go back to being um people that build relationships first and get to get to know each other so that we really can be more of a service to the people that we are wanting to sell to it's hard to it's hard to really be very valuable to a person if you don't know who they are and what it is that they really need yeah, but I have a question for you. I'm playing a little bit of a devil's advocate here. Okay. <laughs> um, the Okay, you've started this relationship. You know, you're talking to people online. You're asking them questions. You're learning about them. They haven't really said a whole lot about, oh, I'd like to know more about your business. You know, it's all, this is me, this is me, this is me. They're happy to tell you everything you want to know about them. But then you come back to them and say, would you like to know a little bit about what I do? No, that's all right. I'm not interested. You know, how do you gracefully, back to the word grace, how do you gracefully introduce yourself and your business 
into these conversations that you've started to have with people? Yeah. So in a situation like that, and I've, I've actually not had, um, I've not had a situation like that specifically. I mean, I've had a situation where people just talk nothing about them, (laughs) except nothing about them. Um, and, uh, you can gracefully um, introduce yourself while you're in the context of conversation. Um, If they haven't asked you what it is that you do, I mean, you generally are hoping and waiting for them to ask you, but Mm -hmm. if you can see that the conversation is not going to what conversation should, which is, um, Hey, so what is it? I'd love to know more about you. And gracefully you can, after they've, you know, given their book, (laughs) <laughs> you, you, can, you can gracefully say, wow, that sounds so interesting. You know, I really love this piece about what it is that you do. And I, now you move into what mm-hmm. it is that you do. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And, and that's really how I do it too, is that um, I remember when there really was such a thing as in-person networking. <laughs> you know, I'm old. <laughs> I, we were all I doing it two weeks ago. <laughs> now, you know, they don't have like the Chamber of Commerce after hours anymore. And, and a lot of the types of in-person networking that were my daily breath, you know, I, I lived those things. They don't do them anymore. It's all It's all online. But I would go into, let's, let's, pick on the poor chambers of commerce because every chamber I've ever been to an after hours meeting, they've all been the same. You'll get groups of people, say a bank or a, a law office, and everybody will have just picked up from their office and transplanted themselves into this new location. And they're still all together. You know, so you got a table of people from the lawyer's office. You got a table of people from, you know, the bank. They're not networking. They're talking to each other and they're standing there with a glass of wine in their hand and a plate of food in the other hand. I would go in and I would look for someone who was sitting by themselves and kind of a little bit in the corner and, you know, like the, like the deer in the headlights or headlights with the deer. And you know, not knowing what they were doing. And I'd go up to them and I would introduce myself and I would say, you know, what brings you here? You look like, you know, this may be your first time or, you know, and I would start to talk to that person and I would talk with them and I would ask them things that I'd get to know more about them. And then, and I would never leave that meeting without sharing a tip of value somebody I knew that might be you know a a potential client for them something they could do something like that and almost inevitably by the time I was ready to leave and move on they would say oh hey wait a minute tell me about your business you know which was an excellent introduction for me we have to do that same sort of thing on social media I think we really do. You have to be willing to ask people about themselves. And like we were just talking about, you know, because here's the thing, everybody likes to talk about themselves. I'm not going to lie. I like talking about my stuff too. <laughs> I can talk about it for days. That being said, I understand that relationships, conversations really are give and take. And if you will be a person that allows the conversation to flow to the person that you're talking to, you will start seeing people understand you as a person of value and that you are giving. You are a giving person. Even in conversation mode, you're a giving person. You can send those compliments their way about what it is that they do and hope that they are a reciprocal giver. But if they're not, Now you know, with what we've talked about today, a little tool that you can use to help, A, number one, compliment them and let them know that you're listening to what it is that they've said about their business, and then pivot the conversation into what it is that you do in a very graceful way. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I think that's probably a very, very important tidbit to take away from this conversation today. I can't believe we're already at the at the end of our time. It just it's gone. How did that so happen? Fast. 
It just went so quickly, my goodness, you know, it's just such wonderful words of wisdom that I hope everyone was uh, writing down and learning from because it's really an important part of, of what we do as, as business people. Before we say goodbye, is there anything that you want to share with us that you need to just shout out about? <laughs> um. Well, anything that I'd like to share with you all, there's so much you and I were talking before, <laughs> before we got on the call and um, just in what we're talking about today in finding where the opportunities are to move your services into where the needs are. Something that um, I didn't mention before, I've, I've been an entertainer for over 20 years and that's, that's the creative part of what it is that I do. So I had to find a way to shift um, my skills and talents to where the needs are. And what I've done with that is create online birthday parties for people. So um, if you go to onlinebirthdayparties.com, then you will be able to see how you can book an online birthday party and have me host it for you in a fun way so that you can continue to meet with your people and celebrate with friends. I'm really excited about that right now. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> I'm excited for it too. And can't wait to follow your journey and see how it all goes. How does someone get a hold of you if they really want to book that birthday party or if they want to use you in some other, you know, consultant way? How how do they reach yeah. you? Yeah. So for the birthday parties, you can go to onlinebirthdayparties.com. You can email me at letstalkparty at onlinebirthdayparties.com. If you would like to speak to me as a creative, you're somebody that's in the beginning. And when I say creative, I'm talking about service-based creatives, people that what it is that they do, you cannot outsource your painting, you can't outsource your art, um, uh, your singing, you can't outsource that. If you'd like to reach out to me in that way, then shoot me an email to ella at thedreamigniter.com and just put in the subject line coaching or consulting. I love it. Thank you so much, Ella. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in today and listening. You can hear this and all of our other wonderful guest speakers on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern at www forward slash don't wait till pigs fly dot com. And until we touch bases again, I can't say get out there because we're all stuck at home, but at least I can say take some time to be productive. Stay safe and healthy and soar higher. Until we talk again, guys, take care and love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.